Hey guys, how you doing? It's Kevin here bringing another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Saturday. And today I want to do more interview questions. So usually when I when someone gets a job in IT, I tell them, please send you send me your interview questions and I'll let you know how I answer in my way. Obviously, if you're new to my channel, if you're new to my channel, you know what to do. Rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. All right. So today I'm gonna pick some interview questions that were given to me by someone that actually just got a job recently. Um, I actually have two people that got jobs. One did a call with me, he got a Linux admin job, and another guy got a tier one IT support job, making over 50k. Uh, I have his interview questions with me, so I'm gonna I'm gonna answer some of them, not all of them, because there's too many questions. There's more than 20 questions here. Actually, there's about 78 questions. I'm not gonna answer all of them because that would be too much. I'm only gonna pick a couple of them and answer some of them. All right, so uh Question number one, describe a situation where you, has, you had to escalate a support ticket to a higher level of technical expertise. Uh, I actually have a lot of examples of this. I'm just going to give you one. One example of this is a customer needed me to allow a website because they were doing trading. So a customer needed a certain website, and that website was blocked by default, and I don't have the ability to unlock that website. So what I ended up doing is I ended up having the ticket created. I reached out to the customer asking him what he needs, why he needs it, what what is needed, and, wh and what's important, what was he doing with it. And he said he's trading, so he needs access to it. All right, awesome. So I'll, I'll see if I'm able to allow that website. So I reached out to some network admin. He told me to escalate and assign a ticket to him, which I did. They deemed it um, safe. They unlocked the website for him, and they gave him access to the website. So when the ticket was assigned back to me, I reached out to the customer, and I asked him, can you please try logging in again? And he logged in, he was able to access the website and it worked fine after that. So it's just one example. Someone needed access to a certain website. It was blocked, it was a blacklist and we whitelisted it for him. It was considered um, blacklisted because of gambling, which is not, but it's just, just, you know, that's just how they characterize it. All right, so that's question number one. Um, let's see here. Um. How do you stay up to date with the latest technology trends and developments in the IT industry? So I follow Twitter. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on social media. Uh, I'm subscribed to some CTO news, news newspapers or newsletters that tells me the latest trends, the latest trends in IT. I also follow um, all the IT, IT companies like Microsoft, IBM, Cisco, uh, 7 the one CrowdStrike, all the big companies. I follow all the big companies. So that I get the latest trends of information. I'm also on Twitter, as I said. That's what I do. Uh, and I'm always going online and looking at stuff every single day when I wake up. I look at the latest, the latest issues with um, hacks and vulnerabilities, zero day viruses, et cetera, et cetera, CVEs. I check all that out. So that's my answer to that question. Next question is: What tools or software have you used to track and manage support tickets? So we use Jira. We use ServiceNow. I use Remedy. I use Fresh Fresh Desk in the past. I use Salesforce. So it, I have experience with these ticketing systems, but obviously everyone has their own experiences. That's just my experience. Let's see the next question. Can you discuss your experience with hardware troubleshooting and repair? Yep, I have experience with troubleshooting desktops, laptops, PCs. In my past experience, I had an issue where a customer was having slowness on their machine. Uh, and because they do trading, I realized that they needed more memory. So what I did was I actually upgraded the memory on that machine from uh, 32 gigs of RAM to 64 gigs of RAM because he uses Bloomberg trading software and it, it fixed his problem. He was good to go after that. And he actually thanked me for that. And I literally just took a day, a day of the week where he left the office, shut off his machine, upgraded for him without bugging him. And then the next day he came in, he was able to log in. I had him test the same application. He's like, yes, I see a big difference, Kev. This is good now. So that's just an example. And next question is, what motivates you to work help that support role? Support role? What, why do you think you're a good fit for this position? So with me, I have customer service experience. I come from a fast food background. I have experience with dealing with customers. I have experience dealing with irate customers. I have experience dealing with customers that get upset and angry. So at the end of the day, um, we, we fix the problem. We don't get, we don't let it personally affect us mentally. By that, I mean like, don't don't take it to heart when a customer is upset. They're upset at the situation. They're not upset at you. 
So you have to have a lot of good customer service experience. You have to know how to have empathy. And you also have to know how to uh, just take care of the customer. Let them know you're there to help. That's pretty much it with me with help desk and support. I love doing help desk and support because I get to see different problems every single day. I get to learn different things every single day. The best part about it is I get to work with people that um, that I like because I worked in customer support for a very long time. I love working with people. So I will be my answer to that question. Um, a user calls is not able to send and receive emails. Obviously, if it was me, I want to make sure if Outlook is even working, if it's set to offline mode by, by accident, they probably click the offline mode button on Outlook. Um, their emails are not being able to send and receive. Maybe their inbox is full. The email is not working. Could be they have no internet. It could be several reasons why their inbox is not working and they're not able to send and receive emails. Those are some of the reasons. I would could close Outlook and reopen it again and see if that fixes the problem. It could be several reasons, but I would have to go into the machine, remote in, and just see why it's not working. Um, and that that's my answer to that question. Uh, so this one's the users unable to log into a computer. That's a simple one. It could be sim as simple as their account is disabled, their account is locked out, their password has expired. Uh, they can't log into a computer. They can't log into their computer. The computer, the computer can also, it really depends on the situation. This is very generic. For my past experience, if someone cannot remote into their machine, it's because their machine is offline. Maybe they're remoting in, they're trying to remote in, trying to connect, and the machine's offline. Could be several reasons why they can't log into a computer. That's just some some of the reasons. Um, let's see, next question. How do you how do you map a network drive? That's an easy one. You go to your computer, like the C Explorer. Uh, you look for this PC, uh, and do map network drive, and then you just select the folder you want to map, and it would be uh, slash 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 share server share whatever the name of it is, and you add it in there and you map it. Um, that's one. There's several ways of doing it. That's just one way of doing it. Uh, I'll give you. I guess we will go over another question. Uh, let's see. A user calls saying that their computer isn't turning on. I would physically check the cable first. I would check the power button. Just tell them to press the power button. Literally, the power is probably not even. They haven't even pressed the button on. Maybe the computer is on and the monitor is off. It, it's simple as going to the monitor and just pressing the monitor button to turn it on. Maybe the computer is not plugged in. Could be that like a physical layer. Check the plug. That's why it probably won't turn on. And at the end of the day, like if that if they're still not able to log in or do anything, and if I'm in the office with them, I will literally just go to their desk and just physically look at the computer. That's basically what I would do. Um, let's see here. Looking at questions. Um what would you do if you need if you needed to make an urgent decision and the manager was away? So that that will go back to policies and procedures. I will follow whatever the best practices are in the company. So maybe my manager is not there. I would reach out to my director or my CTO, whoever's the next hiring, whoever's the next higher level of management, or ask my colleague for help. It really depends on what the what the decision is, but I cannot make the decision unless I have the capability of doing that. Then I would go ahead and make that decision. But if I'm not, if I don't have the capability of doing that, and we have like chain of custody and change of management, like we have different levels of management, I'll just reach out to the director, the CTO, whoever is the, ne the next in charge, and have them approve whatever needs to be approved. If that makes sense. Um, what is one of your greatest recent achievements? So one of my greatest recent achievements is I migrated uh, over one thousand people to the new district storefront. So what I did was I ended up hit getting only a few amount of people. So I made a change management ticket and I scheduled it for Saturday. I got the approval from my manager, my director, and my CTO. Once I got the approval, I did I did a change of storefront to about only a small amount of people because I don't wanna I don't wanna piss off the executives. I don't wanna piss off the C suite. They're like the last people that we work with when we're making changes on their machines. So what I ended up doing was I made changes in the IT department first. Okay, it's good, it's working. Then I slowly picked other departments that I got along with. In my case, I get along with HR and I get along with the finance group. So I reached out to HR, did updates on their storefront for Citrix. Then I did updates with the Department of Finance. I got them up and running. And the last but not least, 
I reached out to the C-suite executives working along with their admin assistants. Admin assistants. I upgraded them. Obviously, when you're working with with admin assistants and executives, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot. There's lots of handholding because they're not tech savvy. So I ended up having the admin assistant work with me directly just to make sure they're able to log in and do everything. So they they have their passwords, so they would just log in, test everything for the for the C suite CEO, CFO, CIO. Um, I migrated them successfully, and they were good to go after that. There was no issues after that. And I I literally told them, hey, if you're having issues, if this feels really weird, uncomfortable, or there's something different and off, let me know, and I'll be more than happy to help you. I'm here to help you. That's it. So that's how I did that migration. It was about a thousand people. I got. 25% of it done Saturday and then 50% done Sunday. The executives were done during the midweek. Uh, I did it I did it during a time that they were not working. This is how I do things because I don't want to bother the executives while they're working. That'd be problematic. And then finally, it was a quick update. It was just literally adding someone to a security group and that's it. So I added them to a group. They have to log in, test everything. And then, and then if it works, they're good to go. That's literally what the what it was. Uh, and I closed the ticket after that. I waited a few days, then I closed the ticket. And they're like, okay, Gav, you're good. You'll migrate everyone successfully. All right, great. And that's it. That's what That was one of my greatest achievements. I was really proud of it because I took ownership of the ticket from the beginning of A all the way to the end of Z, if that makes sense. So my manager was not involved in that. The only one that was involved in that was me. And I got everyone done. I got everyone situated. I got everything up and running. And everyone was happy at the end of the day. So... Those are all my interview questions for today. If you guys want to see any more interview questions, let me know. With that being said, like I said, please rate, comment, subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and have a great Saturday. Take care. Bye.